My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Feast of Pentecost, we celebrate the foundational event of the Church, the great mystery of the coming of the Holy Spirit, exactly as our Lord had promised, and the beginning or the birth of the Church. To help us to prepare for the great Feast of the Pentecost, and especially in this lockdown situation in which we find ourselves, our Jeevan Jyoti Ashram Burari of the Archdiocese of Delhi is helping us through a video to participate in the Novena. And I would request each and all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, to make full use of this video. The Feast of the Pentecost reminds us that we are a spirit-filled, spirit-charged and spirit-inspired people. On that day, we know, as we read in the Acts of the Apostles, the Holy Spirit came in tongues of fire and rested on the Apostles. There was also the great wind. But what is important is a community was born. The community of believers who understood one another in the language of love. All that Peter was preaching was understood by all even though they did not speak the same language. And soon after that the people were together, the believers, sharing everything in common and being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, proclaiming the good news of our redemption, of the salvation of the whole world, both in word as well as in deed. The apostles, they were so frightened before. They were in lockdown, but with the coming of the Holy Spirit, they become courageous witnesses of the good news as we see happening in the life of Peter. How courageously he proclaims the good news. That is Pentecost and we need a new Pentecost today. Today also we need to be courageous witnesses of the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this novena help us to prepare ourselves for the feast and day by day more and more grow in all the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. May our Blessed Mother who was present there with the early church be present with us today and, and help us to say yes to the Holy Spirit. May God bless us all. I invite you all to participate fully in the novena to the Holy Spirit. Hello friends, I want to invite all of you to this nine days of Pentecost Novena. The first session that we're going to have is a time of praise and worship. The Bible tells in Psalms chapter 68 verses 35 that awesome is God from his sanctuary. The God of Israel, he is the one who gives us power and strength and he is to be praised he is to be honored and the scripture says blessed be God forever now dear brothers and sisters when you and I when we give all praise all glory and all honor to God 
we draw strength from him we draw power from him and we can face the day so as we're going to sing this first song i want to invite all of you to sing that our god is an awesome god this is a song written by rich mullins back in the 90s and it's a beautiful song which has traveled all over the globe and those of you who love rap music you can rap with me and i invite all of you to sing this song so let us praise and thank the lord and let us enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving as we sing this song let us sing awesome god Up his sleeve, see angels putting on the reds. There is thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his face. Well, the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason when he shed his blood. His return is very close, and so you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He Now this is a time to thank the Lord and to praise him. So I want all of you to lift your hands if you are comfortable and let us just thank the Lord and let us just draw this power the strength from God as we give him all glory, all honor, all thanksgiving, all dominion belongs to King Jesus. Let us praise God. Thank you Jesus. praise you jesus we lift our hands and we praise you lord as long as i live i will lift my hands and i will praise you i will bless your name in the sanctuary lord jesus you are the prince of peace you are my prime minister you are our prime minister our chief minister lord we praise you we give you thanksgiving give we give you glory thank you jesus praise you jesus blessed be god forever hallelujah now brothers and sisters let us worship god we see in the last book of the bible in revelation chapter 7 verses 15 john in patmos is talking and giving us a reason to worship the lord and he says 
for this reason the people are bowed before the throne of god and these holy men and women who are in heaven they worship our god day and night within his temple and they worship the one who is seated on the throne and he shelters them so as we worship the lord and as we're going to sing this next song majesty dear brothers and sisters i want to invite all of you to surrender ourselves our lives before king jesus the bible tells that those who humble themselves down they will be exalted and again it tells that god opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble as we sing this song let us humble our hearts and let us put our gaze on jesus and let us worship him and let us sing this song majesty
Father God, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we praise you. O oh, Holy Spirit who is alive in us, we thank you for your daily presence. I encourage all of you those who have the gift of tongues to sing in the gift of tongues. If you don't have, just continuously praise God. And as we are awaiting for a new Pentecost experience, let us gently release our tongues and let us set it loose so that we may all experience this divine gift of tongues which Mother Mary and the Apostles were gathered in the upper room and they were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. They experienced. Let us intercede in tongues. O Rama la Rama, Shia Rama Karafa Bara. Shandara la Rama Karafa Bara la Rama, Shia la Rama Karafa Bara. Shudaru ala Rama Karafa Bara la Rama, Shia Rama Karafa Bara. Oh, we worship you, Rama Kala Rama Rashi, Re 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 Rama Kala Fabara. Yeshu Jwala Masiya Ala Rama Kala Fabara. Shudaru Ala Rama Kala Fabara Ala Rama Shi Re. Oh, Rala Rama Shi Rama Kala Fabara. Shudra Rama Kala Fabara. Oh, Rala Rama Kala Fabara. Shudarua, 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 Alarama Karafabar, Alarama Shirama Karafabar. Let us listen to the Holy Spirit and let us ask the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts and our minds so that as His servants we may listen to His word today. Let us make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to this Pentecost Novena. This is being organized by the Jeevan Jodi Ashram in Burari, New Delhi, which is owned by the Delhi Charismatic Renewal Services. Now this is the first day of the Novena and we want to reflect on the Pentecost the Feast of Pentecost. Now all of us celebrate our birthdays with lot of celebration, lot of excitement. Do you know that we have a second birthday, a common birthday and that is the birthday of the church. When the church was born, so the church was born on the day of Pentecost. So now we are preparing for that birthday. So we are going to have nine days of preparation. Now what is the meaning of Pentecost? The meaning of Pentecost is the 50th day. So that is from Easter Sunday till the Pentecost it is 50 days and from the ascension to, to Pentecost it is 10 days so now actually what happened at Pentecost we see this in the Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 we see that when the day of Pentecost had come there was a mighty wind, a very powerful wind that came and that entered into the upper room where the disciples together with Mary were in prayer and then it rested there. It was filled with the wind and the second thing that happened was there was a, there was a divine holy fire that descended upon this upper room it penetrated into the room where they were and it split into tons it rested on each one of them so there was a deafening sound and the sight of the fire and it attracted the people all around 
and we see that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and then they began to speak in tongues which were given to them by the Holy Spirit we also see that there was a lot of excitement lot of bewilderment following the Pentecost now this is what we see in the Acts of the Apostles that was the first Pentecost now the question is this happened in 33 AD and today in 2020 as we are preparing for the Pentecost what are we looking up to what are we expecting from Pentecost as you are praying and preparing what do you have in your mind as I approach the Pentecost I want this now let me ask you is your Pentecost celebration confined to a mere celebration of what happened 2020 years ago or 2000 years ago is it just remembrance of that that is not the spirituality of Pentecost at every Pentecost we relive what we saw in the Acts of the Apostles in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses all over the world that promise was not only for 33 AD but it is as powerful as effective it is today as it was in 33 AD so we are all preparing to receive this power to receive the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit is not someone who lives in the past the Holy Spirit is not confined to history the Holy Spirit is not confined to the Acts of the Apostles what happened in the Acts of the Apostles was not the full and final outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was only the beginning and the Holy Spirit wants to come and fill all of us it's an ongoing process Pentecost is ongoing so the Lord the Holy Spirit is a creator spirit and he is the master of infinite creativity so the Holy Spirit does not want to repeat what has happened in the past the Holy Spirit wants to do something new and this is what Pope Francis told us on 20th January 2014 our God is a God who always does new things and he asks from us docility to this new newness so what is required is that we be docile to this we be open to this the Holy Spirit wants to do his role and we see this in the Acts of the Apostles itself in chapter 4 when Peter and John were before the council the whole community prayed and what they prayed was that seeing the threats give us the boldness give us an anointing of the, of the Holy Spirit and we see in the Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 that as they prayed the place where they were shook and they all experienced a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit there was a second Pentecost happening there so the Pentecost is not full and final it continues every time when we pray for and we expect the Holy Spirit to come so it can happen with any of us as individuals as groups now my question is why the Pentecost Novena what is the meaning of Novena Novena is nine days prayer in a street continuous nine days prayer is called Novena now the first Pentecost Novena happened in the Senecal in the upper room 
with 120 disciples together with Mary when they were praying for nine days from the time of ascension to Pentecost was the first Pentecost event. So now that was not the end. You know, especially I want to draw your attention to the end of the 19th century when Blessed Elena Gora, she was a holy woman, a foundress of Oblate Sisters of the Holy Spirit. Now she wrote 12 confidential letters to Pope Leo XIII. The gist of her letter was this, Holy Father, the Pentecost is not over. We do not have to be envious of the disciples and the apostles, but the Holy Spirit wants to pour out on us every time and every place. So let us invite the church back to the cenacle. That was the gist of her letters written to the Holy Father, Pope Leo XIII. Now Pope Leo XIII was a Pope who was very open to the Holy Spirit and he issued an apostolic letter and he also made this Pentecost Novena this was in 1897 and then he promulgated this in the whole church and when he circulated this Pentecost Novena to the church he decreed that this Novena prayer should be recited in every parish every place as a preparation for Pentecost he wanted this to be done all over the world so now we can do what the Holy Father, Pope Leo XIII has asked us to have this nine days of prayer, expectation, waiting together with Mary and the disciples for a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, this Pentecost is something very special because we are all mostly in the lockdown. Still, we are confined to our homes. And then there are many questions, why COVID-19? And I would say that this is a sign coming from the Lord. As Luke chapter 12, 54, 56 says, it's a sign of the time. The Lord is speaking to us. Especially I would say the Lord is inviting us back. It's a time of three hours, repentance, a repentance, renewal and restoration. The Lord is calling us to repentance. Come back to me. You know, we are all gone astray. We are gone very far from the Lord through all our perversions, through all our crimes, for, through all our bad habits and addictions. And for, with all the perversions and crimes we have committed. So, we need to repent and we need to experience this renewal of the Holy Spirit and then we need to go back to the Lord so that the Lord is able to restore all that we have lost. The restoration is already happening in the nature and the restoration has to happen within you and me. So let us repent, let us experience this renewal, the new life that the Holy Spirit is going to give to us and let us go back to the Lord. I just want to share with you the experience of a saint, Saint Philip Neri. He's called the Saint of the Holy Spirit. He's also called the Apostle of Rome. You know, he was a very young man in his 20s when he went to the catacomb of Saint Sebastian in 1544. You know, he was at the Pentecost vigil, the Saturday, just before the Pentecost, he was doing a night vigil, Pentecost vigil, praying. And as he was praying, he had a powerful experience. That experience was a ball of fire came towards him and it entered into him through his mouth and it rested in his heart, near to his heart, in his chest. So when this fire entered into his heart his ribs broke two of his ribs broke his heart got enlarged 
and that continued throughout his life so with that experience of Pentecost he always had this fire of the Holy Spirit within him during his ministry when he was sitting in the confessional when he was celebrating the mass so he was always beating his heart was beating for the Lord he was full of the Holy Spirit this is something that you and I need to experience at this Pentecost this is the vigil that we should observe as we are going towards the Pentecost so let us all prepare ourselves for this beautiful time of Pentecost and let me tell you when once the Holy Spirit comes we will never be the same we will never be the same just as it happened to the disciples so let us close our eyes you know there is a beautiful reflection that the church is the bride of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the bridegroom so as a church we have every right to wait upon the Holy Spirit as a church as a bride we need to receive the Holy Spirit we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 we see that in the beginning the world was a formless void the whole world was covered with darkness so there was a lot of confusion there was a lot of chaos a lot of darkness or brokenness everything was in a mess and that is the time the Holy Spirit hovered upon this confusion this darkness as he hovered upon this darkness the whole world was created right now there is a lot of confusion we need to invite the Holy Spirit to hover over all our confusions all our darkness all our fearfulness and surrender our life to the Holy Spirit let us be thirsty Revelation chapter 21 6 says to the thirsty I will give a gift I will give a gift from the spring of life giving water the Lord is going to give us that gift let us open our arms praise let us praise as he is going to pour out his spirit upon us hallelujah hallelujah praise you Jesus we welcome you Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit fill us with your fire Give us your power, Lord. We thirst for you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Deepa and I'm here to share what the Holy Spirit has done for me. I come from a non-Christian background and when I was in the first year of college, I started getting a series of dreams and in all the dreams I would see a church and Jesus in different forms. In one of my dream I saw myself on the terrace of my house with Jesus next to me and both of us were looking up in the sky and as we were just looking Jesus pointed out in a particular direction. When I looked there we saw a dove descending not flying but descending down towards me and Jesus told me go and hold him I went forward spread my hands and the dove descended straight into my hands it was beautiful white dove and as I was admiring how white and uh, snowy it looks the, G uh, the Lord told me to lift up the feathers and look at it intently when I lifted the feathers and looked at it, it was golden dove from the inside, covered with white feathers. After this dream, I was wondering what is that dove and what would that mean? A few months later, there was a retreat in the college where a team from Delhi came and during the last day of the retreat, uh, that is a session called as the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, as the team was singing the song Precious Spirit Come, Holy Spirit Come, I was there right behind in the auditorium 
lifted my hands and i was repeating the song as the team was leading us with my eyes closed though there was a lot of manifestation happening a lot of people bursting out into tongues and all that was happening around me none of it or none of uh, which i could understand but i still closed my eyes lifted my hands and i was praying and i felt something resting on my head the first instant i assumed it is one of the preachers or the a uh, prayer group members who's laying their hand upon me and praying uh but the feeling was not that as of a person's hand something inside me said could it be the lord could it be the holy spirit but then again i refuted that thought how is it possible but that feeling of that weight upon my head was still there and therefore to uh undo my doubts i reached out to my head and i i i touched the place where i felt there was something and when i touched it it was the like the claws of the bird and then i knew it is the dove resting on me and as i i was very sure of what i could feel and what uh you know there was no room for any more doubt that it is the dove resting on me physically i could touch and feel i lifted my hands and i started but i bursted out in tears i bursted out in tongues and i started praising the holy spirit uh, from deep within my heart and after i uh, the spirit led me into total surrender i felt the weight being lifted up that is the spirit ascending back This was my baptism in the Holy Spirit. Two years later, when I reached the third year of college, by then I had so many beautiful experiences with the Holy Spirit, uh, experiences which left no ro- uh, stone unturned uh, in terms of faith. By the time I was in third year, I was very sick for my exams, very very sick. so sick that i had no strength even to hold a pen and write the exams uh so i went to my principal on the day of the exam and i requested if she could give me a writer a person who could write for me i would i would dictate the answers and if somebody could write because i was in really really bad shape sister just looked at me and she said i give you a writer the holy spirit will be your writer take him and write your exam i surely did not expect that answer i expected a human hand to write for me and so not knowing how to answer such a, a um, proposal i silently went to the examination hall and i just prayed lord holy spirit it's just you and me now i have no strength and i i have i do not even know i ha- couldn't study so I need you and sister has given you to me as a writer Jesus gives you to me as a my helper please help me and as i sat there requesting invoking the holy spirit um of course i i, I couldn't prepare well uh, so i knew nothing um but as i read the question paper there is some answer generating in my head which i thought if i write it should be okay and i started writing my hands started moving the answer the sentence in my head stopped but my hands didn't and i went on writing went on writing the coordination between my head and my hand was absolutely not there i was thinking of something else and i was writing something totally different at the end of the answer when i looked back and i read it was nothing what i had studied or what i remembered and then i knew it is the holy spirit actually writing for me at another instance the holy spirit kept the book open before me all i had to do is look and write there was no book physically before me but the holy spirit opened the book spiritually i could just see the book before me and i all i had to do is just write the answers actually it was the first time studying which i can say i did it during my exam few years later after i got married i got married into a 
साउथ इंडियन फैमिली विथ टोटली डिफरेंट कल्चर टोटली डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज बिफोर द मैरिज आई रिक्वेस्टेड माई हजबेंड टू बी टू हेल्प मी विथ फ्यू बेसिक वर्ड्स एंड वो कैबिलिर इन द लैंग्वेज सो दैट वंस आई गेट मैरिड एंड कम इट वोंट बी अ चैलेंज फॉर मी टू अंडरस्टैंड अदर्स एंड टू मेक माई सेल्फ अंडरस्टूड बट समाउ ही वॉज नेवर फॉर इट एंड ही नेवर वॉन्टेड मी टू टेक इट एज अ बिग डील एंड ही डिंट हेल्प मी विद द लैंग्वेज पार्ट एट ऑल सिक्स मंथस आफ्टर आई गॉट मैरिड of course i didn't understand anybody around me at all and uh, most of the people had huge difficulty understanding me uh and therefore the only uh, comfort i had was again the holy spirit i went home to my parents place and um i stayed there a few months when i came back when i came back um to my husband's house I could not just understand the language I could also speak the language there was a constant translation happening in my head as this constant translation was going on in my head when people were talking among each other and there was whatever conversation was happening the holy spirit continuously translated those words and taught me those words uh when i was not even a part of that conversation and uh i was just able to frame sentences and communicate in the language that they spoke and understood and that's when i realized that um the gift of the holy spirit the gift of tongues is not just speaking in a uh, in a heavenly language it also uh means understanding each other communicating in the language that our fellow brethren to understand the holy spirit walks and talks and guides every single day of our life thank you and god bless in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen charity let us bow down in humility at the power and grandeur of the holy spirit Let us worship the Holy Trinity and give glory today to the Paraclete, our Advocate. O Holy Spirit, by your power, Christ was raised from the dead to save us all. By your grace, miracles are performed in Jesus' name. By your love, we are protected from evil. And so we ask with humility and a beggar's heart for your gift of charity within us. The great charity of all the hosts of saints is only made possible by your power. O divine spirit increase in me the virtue of charity that i may love as god loves with the selflessness of the saints amen come holy spirit fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth o god who by the light of the holy spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful grant that by the same holy spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our lord amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus we are so glad and we are so pumped that all of you watched this entire day once schedule of pentecost novena and as we are journeying in this 9 days of pentecost novena i urge all of you to take part in this with full prayer and with full preparation and again we are going to meet tomorrow that is for day 2 we are going to have new songs by the youth band of y4c we are going to have another wonderful speaker and we are going to listen to the lord what the lord did through a very powerful life transforming testimony and as we journey in this let us ask the holy spirit to give us and surprise us with a new pentecost experience so please share this video with all your friends families and relatives and subscribe to our jeeva jyoti ashram channel so that you are enriched with the word of god hope to see you tomorrow god bless you